Chapter 22 The Rescue of Robin Hood One evening, a week after Robin Hood had been taken prisoner, two travellers called at the sheriff's house. The sheriff had been a worried man since Robin was taken prisoner. Every night, the outlaw's friends had made attempts to release him, but they had not succeeded. When he heard that two travellers had arrived from Westminster, the sheriff felt relieved. He showed them into the dining room at once. Little John kept in the shadows of the hall so that the sheriff would not recognise him. He had to take care, for he had served the sheriff under the name of Reynold Greenleaf. Much the miller's son handed the sheriff a letter supposed to be from the King of England. "'Where is the monk who took the letter to the king?' asked the sheriff. "'The king took such a fancy to him that he kept him in London,' replied Much the miller's son. The sheriff asked no further questions, but studied the king's message. The king ordered that Robin should be taken to London. The sheriff invited his guests to eat and drink with him while they discussed the best way of getting their dangerous prisoner to London. As soon as the servants had left the room, however, Little John clapped his great hand over the sheriff's mouth so that he could not cry out, while much the miller's son tied him securely to his chair. Then the two bold outlaws left him and made their way out of the castle. They ran silently through the streets and down dark alleyways. They intended to find Robin's cell to see what chance there was of helping him escape. Such a strong guard had been placed around the gates of Nottingham that none of Robin's band had yet been able to get inside the city to free their outlaw leader. Little John and much the miller's son now had a chance of rescue. Before long they came to an open space and found that they were walking across country ground. They were between the two walls and the castle rock. It was somewhere in the side of the castle rock, as little John had discovered, that there was an entrance to a cave. At the end of this cave lay the dungeons in which Robin Hood was kept prisoner, whilst to the sheriff awaited the return of the messengers from Westminster. It was much the miller's son who stumbled across the cave entrance. It was half covered by leafy bushes. At the sound of his stumbling, a sentry came running to the cave mouth. He had no time to cry out before little John leapt from the shadows and felled him with a single blow. The two men ran swiftly into the cave, slowing up as the light became more dim. Presently they came to a door. It was locked. Stand clear, said little John, and charged the door. Under his great weight, the door gave way, and the two hurried on. In front of them was a long flight of stone steps, at the top of which stood a sentry. Oh, sentry, called little John from the darkness at the bottom of the steps. The sentry turned, grasped one of the torches that were burning in the wall at the top of the steps, and started to make his way down the steps. Little John waited, then delivered a blow that felled the sentry like a log. He lay still at the foot of the stairs. Other voices could now be heard. Little John had made more noise than was safe. Every footstep sounded at the top of the stairs. There was no time to be lost. 
Help there, cried little John loudly. Robin Hood has escaped. The footsteps broke into a run. Which way did he go? asked the voice of another sentry excitedly. It was too dark where little John was standing for the sentry to see him. He called out that Robin had run down the stairs and along the passage that led out of the castle rock. The sentry ran on, a second guard followed him, a third started to do the same, but instead he ran to a cell door and knocked heavily upon it. Hello! What to do now? Little John heard the voice from inside of the cell. It was the voice of Robin Hood. Whoever has escaped is not Robin Hood, cried the sentry. Not yet, smiled Little John, as he stuck the sentry a blow that sent him reeling to the ground. He picked up the keys that had been lying by the side of the first warder. He found one that fitted the cell lock, and thrust open the heavy wooden door. Little John walked in. "'Bravely done,' commented a calm voice. "'Loosen my chains, and I will do my part.' Much the miller's son brought over the bunch of keys, and tried them until he had opened the padlocks that bound Robin's chains. Robin stood up and stretched his cramped body. It was great to be unfettered again. Suddenly there came the sound of men rushing towards the cell door. Robin and his two companions stood by the door silently. The cell was dark. One, two, three, four men with swords rushed into the cell. Robin dragged little John and much the miller's son out of the door. Once free, he slammed the door quickly shut and locked it. The four soldiers were imprisoned before they realised what was happening. "'How shall we get out of here, Robin?' asked little John. "'I shall go out as I came in,' said Robin, "'by the great entrance.' His plan was a daring one. They marched out boldly with a score of other men who were ordered to raise the town guard and warn all the warders at the gates. There was one dangerous moment when a big soldier, hurrying to find out what the commotion was about, bumped into little John. The giant outlaw, thinking that he was discovered, promptly grappled with the soldier and threw him. "'Hey, what means this?' cried the soldier angrily. "'He thought you wished to try your strength against his,' cried Robin quickly, seeing that little John had made a mistake. "'Your pardon, friend?' All who met Robin and his friends after that took them to be some of the soldiers that had been called in from Wakefield and Pontefract to make the garrison larger. Robin Hood was a free man again. End of chapter 22